Hello everyone, this is Betsy from Ideas Times 2. I have a couple more uh, paper dyeing tips for you, some tricks. Uh, Cindy has made a video about um, dyeing tea, uh, coffee dyeing um, and avocado dyeing paper with some tips and tricks. I will put the link for her video down below. I also made a video um, about tea dyeing um, and I will put that link down below as well and I have tried something new and learned a little new more information about cabbage dyeing so I am gonna come on here real quick and let you guys know what what I find found out and also we had a couple questions uh, we asked you what kind of tutorials you guys would like and um, tea dyeing was one of them and how we get our papers grungy was another one and so that is what I'm going to cover here in this video plus a few new things that I've learned so um, let's just get right into it here first of all I've been the last couple days I've been doing a lot of dyeing um, na using natural dyes for paper so these are all tea stained which is normal right you you'll be able to watch our videos on that no big deal um, I made um, this pattern just by placing it on my pizza pan which has holes in it and so I get this so let's address this first real quick quickly I did do some coffee dyeing so I'm going to show you the difference the the main difference that I've noticed between coffee dyeing and tea dyeing coffee um, has a wonderful smell gives a wonderful smell to the paper unless you dip it again in like baking soda something like that to neutralize it but it has a is a delicious uh, smell I love opening up my journal that Cindy made me and it is coffee dyed paper and the smell is just delicious tea dyeing doesn't have um, that type of a smell to the paper um, the other main difference I believe is tea dyeing isn't as dark um, where the ink pools and puddles on the edges of the paper as you can see here it's not as dark as if you would have used coffee this is uh, four times the strength of what you would normally drink so this is this is pretty heavily uh, saturated with tea versus water and so this is about as dark as it was getting now when it when it pools up a lot and then dries quickly you've got you do have some darkening um, as you can see, I'm going to flip through some of these. Uh, the blooming, a couple people had asked me about the blooming, how I got the, um, um, let's see, what would you call it? Sort of like um, creeping sort of motions um, on my paper. And the answer to that is, here's, here's some right here not quite as dark as the ones that I had filmed on one of my journal videos where people said hey how did you do that the answer answer is very simple so after I have my concentrated tea which is um, generally lately I've been using four tea bags per one cup of tea to do small batch and if I let that tea sit for two or possibly three days it it gets a little sediment on the bottom and when I pour that out into the flat pan to dip my papers, the sediment gets on my papers and then it just sort of blooms or blossoms. It sort of spreads in a, in kind of a um, fan-like um, movement and that kind of makes the bloom in my paper. And so this was discovered by accident, of course. Uh, I was tea dyeing and I couldn't get to the rest of my solution I couldn't get to all of my papers that I wanted to do so I just left it on my countertop for two or three days and then I had those little um, blooms in my in my on my paper and it was as a direct result of the just letting the tea sit for a couple of days so that is the answer to that question now, quickly, before I put this tea dyed paper away, I'm going to show you the coffee dye. So you can see, you can clearly see, this coffee, too, by the way, is not super saturated. It is, I just made two cups of coffee in my little coffee machine. 
and then poured the coffee into the pan. And so you can see that it is darker. And if I would have made this super concentrated, it would be even darker. You can see um, along the edges and where, where it pooled. So here's my pizza pan with coffee. Here's my pizza pan with four times the strength of tea. So you can see it's darker and it's, it's just regular coffee. It's not super concentrated. So let me just flip through these real quickly. And I didn't make as many because I had already done so, so many, so much dyeing. I was getting tired. <laughs> but so anyway, I guess you can see it best by just me showing you like, like this. You can see it. Um, another way to get your papers nice and grungy is to, well, let me see if I have some super grungy papers in here. This is the journal Cindy made for me. And she does coffee dye on a regular basis. So let me see if she's got some. There's some nice um, coffee coffee mug type marks on there. Here, like this grunginess here. Um, if you, it depends on how you are laying your papers. Make sure you lay your papers. Stack a couple on top of each other. Put them um like perpendicular so they cross each other over um, when the paper is um, make sure the paper has little puddles on it so for instance you could let it dry halfway and then sprinkle some more coffee on it and then you can grunge it up so the key really is to just have the the coffee pool up um, another good way to do it is have the pan would be hot and then you'd lay your coffee coffee dipped sheet of paper right on the hot pan and instantly it will bubble up and, and the coffee will concentrate in certain areas. So that's another great way to grunge up your paper. So I hope that answers your question for that. So let me put the, the coffee and tea stained papers aside and show you what else I've been doing. So here is um, avocado dyed paper. I, I dyed all these papers with two avocados and Cindy has uh, clear instructions how to do that with her video. I'm going to leave the link below, as I had mentioned. There are no words to describe the color of this paper. If paper could have a tangible word, I would say creamy. So just like a, an a, avocado is creamy, my sister Cindy and I were talking on the phone and discussing this. If, if avocado texture when you eat it is creamy and buttery um, the same would apply to the color that's left behind by the by the skin and this and the pit which is what you you do you boil the skin and the pit to get this beautiful color now I was surprised because in the pan my my water avocado water after boiling it for it was about 45 minutes um, to an hour and the water looked hideous. I really, I was like, oh, this is a waste of time. What did I do wrong? But when I used it and I made sure to saturate it, um, this is the color. And look at this one had lots of pooling of the um, liquid. And so that has a beautiful grungy look. And I, I hope you can see this. Let, let me show you compared to white. So here's white. And you can see how gorgeous these papers are. Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. It's difficult to see it on film. You really have to do it yourself. But it is absolutely stunning. So it's like a dusty rose color. Alright. Now let's move on to this yellow. How did I get yellow? Isn't that funny? I didn't know either. <laughs> this is something I'd never heard of anybody doing before. But um, I went to get some beets because I thought I'd heard heard of people using beets. I hadn't really seen too much um, on it. But I thought, well, how hard can it be? You just chop up the beets, boil it, use the water. You know, the same old, same old, right? And so this this color came from golden beets. So I was in the beets section getting my red beets and right next to it was golden beets. I've never even heard of golden beets. 
they smell just like regular beets. I mean, I like beets, and I think these would have been delicious, but I didn't eat any. <laughs> I just boiled them for my color. But look at how stunning this yellow color is. I mean, I hope you can see that. This color is amazing. I ripped one page, as you can see. So you've got the same thing when the when the color pools up a little bit. You've got lines, and when you lay a paper down at an angle to another paper, you're going to get lines. But this paper is so beautiful. So look for golden beets. Here I laid it on my pizza pan. Isn't that pretty? So look for golden beets. Boil it. Chop it up. Boil it for an hour. Strain it and use the liquid for your paper. It is stunning. Um, I think beets may have a little bit of a sugar content to them. I did find a little bit of sticking every once in a while, more so than tea and coffee. And so all I, I just would recommend um, if, you're fi if you're finding your paper is like, for example, on this edge, it's sticking to the pan. Just get it wet again and wait for one or two minutes and then lift it and it will come right up without tearing. And then just set it aside on a different surface to dry. So that's all I did. This is super concentrated and it was kind of sticky now that I think about it, but I, I put um, some powder on top of it and it's not, it's not sticky anymore, but this color, I was so, so excited when I got that pretty yellow color. All right, this, this I'll show you in a minute. So here is my beet paper, my red beet paper. It's a magenta. <laughs> it's totally magenta. I love, love, love this color. Look at how pretty. This, this came from a dirty pan. I'd been doing cabbage dyeing, and then I did beet dyeing, and so I still had some cabbage juice on there, but look at how pretty that is. Um, so you can see again where the color is concentrated. You can see here where I had another piece of paper on top. But this color is stunning. And I had three beets. And look at how much paper I got. I, I don't even know how much is there. Probably 50 sheets of paper. And my hybrid. I just love that. I think it is so pretty. It would be a great idea and a fun idea to do um, more of these. Like do it on purpose. So that is my red beet dyed paper. And you can see how fun my pizza pan was here. Those little dots. I can see using this in a 50s journal or something. I think that is super, super cute. Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> it's just so cute. All right, so um, this is a, a red cabbage. They call it red cabbage, right? Red cabbage dye. So what you do is you boil your cabbage, and I would say maybe just boil a third of your cabbage with just enough juice to cover it, um, and then you will get so much dye. I mean, the, you could you could dye cabbage dye um, paper all day long. I swear, with one head of cabbage. So this is very purple, as you can see. Um, if you hold it up next to this. I mean, it's it's obviously purple, right? And where it's concentrated, you can even see it even better. So if you if you just straight up boil the cabbage, you'll get a, a nice, beautiful purple color. If you add vinegar, you'll get more of a magenta color like this. I'm pretty sure it would be very similar to this. I don't have any samples to show you, but I do know from doing purple cabbage dyeing before that the color can vary with the acidity of the water. If you add acidity or alkalinity, I should say, if you add baking soda to your water, you'll get more of a blue, a denim blue, which is what I had be previously, but this is definitely purple. So this is just straight up cabbage. Add like one tablespoon of baking soda and you'll get a beautiful denim blue. Add about a half a cup of vinegar and you will get more of a, a rosy magenta color. So, um, and this, this is something new that I learned. I, well, let me give you something to look at. Oh, 
Oh, before we go on, so I'm going to show you this. This paper, you would think, would just be uh, tea dye, right? But it's not. It is actually old cabbage juice. So I had, I had dyed paper with cabbage previously and left it in my refrigerator for a couple weeks, the juice, because there was so much juice and forgot about it. So I took it out a couple weeks later. It wasn't spoiled or anything and it still looked purple, but um, the acidity had changed so much that this is the color that I got. I only did two sheets because I did not want to waste it um, with, you know, depending on how it dried and I didn't know how it would dry. So it's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful color for grungy paper, but look at the difference. Fresh cabbage, uh, old cabbage. So just a, just a hint, like you could still use old cabbage water. Okay. So this is what I learned. So you can take five iron pills that you would buy, you know, in the drugstore powder. Um, I guess they would be powdered add hot water, about a cup of hot water to five iron pills, you know, and make sure it d dissolves. Add that to your two cups of cabbage water and you'll get a beautiful gray color, which would be lovely. I had made, I guess I could show you my old cabbage paper. Anyway, I'd recently made um, three journals with men's neckties as on the cover. And in there, I picked my cabbage dyed paper that was mostly gray. And so that is, that is why, because, um, because the chemi the chemical, um, makeup of the cabbage water had changed. And so it was more of a gray than, um, gray blue rather than the purple, as you can see here. So those are just some quick, quick things. I also had taken some still pictures. I'm going to try to... I will either put those at the end of this video or I will try to put them in the middle. Um, how I prepared my beets and uh, to make the dye. So I will see if I can get that sneaked in there for you. So that is it. I wanted to show you my, my uh, variations, my natural uh, dyeing, red beets, golden beets, and avocado. And then tea versus paper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will see you in the next video. I'll leave our links for our Etsy shop down below and our blog. Hope to see you later. Bye everybody.